Hey guys, my name is Chris if you didn't already know and welcome to my show Smeg Chris Review. I know, I'm actually doing another one within weeks of doing the last one. Or a week. Depends when I upload this. Either way, shock horror! <laughs> As you can see from the title below, this review is about Twisters but before I get on with that, I want to talk about the original movie, Twister. I remember going to see it at the cinema and I'm getting goosebumps already just from talking about it. Seriously, honestly, look. Goosebumps. Wow. I digress. Like I say, I remember seeing Twister for the very first time at the cinema. And all I can recall is that you could hear the wind from the tornadoes, the Twisters, on the speakers behind. And I'm just like, whoa. And I love that film so much, I went back again. And this time I plonked myself in the middle of the cinema so I could get a proper 360 sound bubble of all the tornado twisting noises. Ah oh, man, it was amazing. Now I know it got a lot of mixed reviews when it came out and people still think, eh, Twister it's all right, but mm. to me, it's one of my favorite films ever made. Let me put it this way. When the film came out, I went out instantly and bought the soundtrack, which I've still got to this day, and I still listen to it now and then. I mean, it's not a brilliant soundtrack, but it introduced me to Van Halen. This is when I first heard them properly. After that, I started going out buying all the Van Halen albums, like every single one of them. Yeah, I was a bit late to that game. I remember getting the film on VHS video, and at the time I was living in a flat, and I bought myself this great big TV with Dolby Surround, you know, those speakers that go behind you. So of course the first thing that I ever watched on that TV was Twister. And I remember I had the speakers behind and there were speakers in front and I think there was a subwoofer as well and I was like having to, as I'm watching it, trying to get the sound just right so that I could hear the tornado behind as well as in front. And eventually I got it just right and I'm like, ah oh, this is amazing. And it's also one of those films where I can watch it at the drop of a hat, I could just watch it repeatedly all the time. There's very few films that do that for me. And of course eventually DVD came along so I migrated from VHS to DVD and then eventually, of course, it's me, I got it on Blu-ray. Right here look see. It's a bit dusty. <laughs> I loved everything about Twister. The story, the characters, some of them were very very colourful. I loved, well I love Bill Paxton anyway but him playing Bill he was fantastic in the role. I fell in love with Helen Hunt. She was brilliant as Joe. And the characters that went along with them, I loved all of them too. When they go off to visit Joe's aunt and they're all going, food, food, food. <laughs> and you know, you get to learn about the fact that Bill can sort of understand what the weather's going to do. And I thought that was like a unique little twist there for his character. And of course, all the twisters, they were always in your face with these great big roaring noises and of course the wind. It was almost like the twisters were characters of their own and they were chasing after him. And of course, you've got Jonas, the sort of bad guy in the film. A bit of a, an arrogant person, really. Played by Carrie, 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 Ules, Ules. I don't really know how you say his name. But I like him as an actor as well, so seeing him play this role, I thought, oh, brilliant. But there's also lots of emotion in there. There was like tragic circumstances, like when Joe's aunt's house collapses, you know, and they had to go and rescue her. Also, there's quite a lot of humour in there. And always, like when they were trying to get their capsule, Dorothy, to go up into the tornado, into the twister, it was always like anxious to get there, you know, and you could feel it along with the characters. And that last final scene where they finally get Dorothy up into the twister and then it starts chasing after them and they have to go through that farm and they go into that barn where there's all those metallic sharp objects and they're like no chance and they make it to this little outhouse where there's the pipe stuck in the ground and they tie themselves to it and the twister comes over them and they're upside down looking into the twister. I thought it was just spot on. I loved every single moment of that. And I'm getting goosebumps again. <laughs> Just talking about it. Wow, my hairs. Look at my hairs, they're all stood up. <laughs> That's how much I love this film, honestly. And just recently, I think in the past year, I managed to get the score soundtrack. Look, see, by Mark Mancina. 
I think that's how you say his name. I've always loved his music. You know, he did like Speed and so forth. And this is just epic. I love it. I was so happy when I got it. I've, I've got to do that again. <laughs> so what I'm trying to say is Twister is one of my all time favorite movies. I know I've already said that, but I'm saying it again, just to emphasize it. So when I heard about Twisters coming along, I'm like, please be a sequel. Do not be a remake. That's what worried me. And thankfully, it was a sequel and I could breathe a sigh of relief when I saw that. So what did I think of Twisters? Um, I loved it. Now, don't get me wrong, I might be biased because I love Twister that much. It's not as good as Twister. Nowhere near. But it is a good film. In fact, it's a great film. Because one of the things that did worry me was, was it going to be sort of like a carbon copy of Twister? Like beat for beat and whatever but no it starts off totally different you've got these students who have got a Dorothy with them a Dorothy capsule and some other equipment where they're going to try and disperse the twister like try and get rid of it try and kill it off to me that was a bit of a sort of sci-fi-ish type thing and I was sort of like hmm doesn't seem that plausible but I went along with it anyway and so one of the students he stayed behind to do all the calculations and watch the equipment as it goes up into the funnel and the others went out to go and try and get all the equipment into the twister and as that was happening I'm thinking yeah you're gonna get picked off you're gonna get picked off and you are definitely gonna get picked off and so you know they managed to get all their equipment into the twister but they misjudged what kind of tornado it was going to be it was a bigger one than they expected and it starts chasing them they end up crashing, have to vacate the truck. They went under, well, to this underpass of a road. And of course, one by one, they were getting picked off until there was just one left. Yeah, I can't help it. I watched that many movies that sometimes, just sometimes, I know exactly what's about to happen. And more often than not, I'm right. So the only person who survived that encounter was Kate, played by... I'm not looking at my phone, honest. Daisy Edgar Jones. I must remember that. I find that she's the main character of the film. And so after that disaster, it cuts to five years later. She's living in New York. She's gone away from all of that kind of research and chasing tornadoes. The other survivor, Jarve, played by <coughs> Anthony Ram Ramos. Ramos? Yeah. So Jarve finds Kate in New York. They meet up and he's trying to convince her to go back with him because... He explains that he joined the military and now he's got this equipment where he can set it up around a twister to triangulate what's going off inside a tornado. And of course she's reluctant at first to join him but obviously she does eventually. So when she does finally return with him, they sort of cross paths with this YouTuber called Tyler played by Glenn Powell. I think it's Glenn Powell. Yeah, Glenn Powell. I got it right this time. Woohoo! Now at first I didn't think I'd like that character but he does grow on you because he's loud and boisterous but he's got some really cool gadgets on his truck that he uses to chase the tornadoes and one of those gadgets is like this sort of drill thing that goes into the ground and it sort of holds the truck steady so they can sit in a tornado which well, I thought was cool and then to add to that they, they start firing fireworks off into it and you see all these colourful explosions in the twister so I thought that was awesome. But of course there's a little rivalry between Tyler, sorry I'm trying to remember the names, and Kate. Yeah, they're the names, right? Yeah. <laughs> but of course a friendship develops there. It was to be expected. Like I said with Twister, the tornadoes, they were sort of in your face, they were like characters of their own. I feel like in Twisters They've not done that because they know that you've seen it all before in the original movie. They don't need to do it in Twisters. So that gave way for more development for the characters, which I really enjoyed. But like I said, Kate was the main focus. And it was sort of like her journey going from she was petrified of Twisters after what happened at the beginning. And she slowly starts to grow her confidence and facing up to her fears, basically. So as the film went on, you spent more time with the characters, less time with the Twisters. I'm not saying there wasn't any. There was quite a lot. But like I say, they spent more time with the characters. But 
the climax of the film, the last 10-15 minutes, wow, it's just amazing. Obviously I'm not going to spoil it here. Although I kind of figured what was about to happen, I was right, but it was no less brilliant. I really enjoyed the way it ended. But one of the things that I did find disappointing was we saw nobody from the original movie, not even as a cameo. There was sort of an inclination that possibly Kate was the daughter of Bill and Joe because she also had that same gift of being able to understand what the weather's going to do. And I thought, she's, she's the daughter, she's the daughter. I was wrong, for once. <laughs> I mean, it would have been a bit of a letdown because we did actually see Kate's mom and she's living on this farm and, you know, she's living a sort of slow, calm life. That's not Joe. Joe, Joe was like, out there. But it'd have been nice to have seen just, like, one of them. Any of them. Alan Rook is his name. Back to the phone. <laughs> I was right, Alan Rook, who did all the maps in the original one. It'd have been nice to have seen him as, I don't know, just somebody passing by or saying hello or was part of one of the other groups. I don't know. Because like I said earlier, I loved, loved all of their characters. And it was sad to see a Twister film without any of them. So, as much as I enjoyed Twisters, I thought it was a really great film. It's not quite as good as Twister, in my opinion. And maybe it's because I'm biased, because I love Twister that much. So maybe in time, Twisters will start gradually growing on me even more than it already has. Because I give Twisters a... An absolute great movie. Not as good as Twister, in my opinion. But I feel like it will grow on me. It will definitely be in my collection at some point. Most likely on Blu-ray. Anyway, that's the end of this video, so it's time for me to go. All that's left for me to say is thank you for watching and subscribing if you have, and liking this video if you did. Until the next time, peace out. That's one of the other things I remember about watching the original Twister. As they were doing some racing through fields and along roads, Van Halen was playing and I'm like, who is this? I, I really like this song. And at the end of the film, Eddie and Alex Van Halen, they did this great theme tune as the clouds were rolling across the sky and everything. And I got massive goosebumps from that. And to this day, I still love that track. So yeah, not long after watching the film, I was out hunting for Van Halen CDs. <laughs> I got them all, eventually.